everybody. Let's try to make sense of section four of the Canadian Electrical Code. Section four is a very well-known section that is called conductor sizing. Here's what we're basically doing in section four. We have a whole lot of rules and those rules have, you know, 27 subsections or something like that. But we have to, we have to make sense of it. And, you know, Excel sometimes helps for making sense of things. I'm not going to use Excel for calculations here. I'm just going to use it to kind of organize our material. What happens in section four is you have to figure out the ampacity that you have for a conductor, right? Like you, you know the ampacity in amps of uh, something that you are uh, going to use. And section four helps you find the size um, that, you'll, you, that, that you can choose to handle that ampacity. So we're gonna figure out the ampacity, but the ampacity then gets reduced by some things. Reduced by, well, it's reduced by uh, the temperature rating of the um, of the insulation. And also you have to have a larger size to handle the ampacity if there are some mechanical corrections you have to do. And I'm making that up, mechanical corrections. So these are both Correction factors, okay? Temp, um, so insulation, temp, um, correction factor. And then there are some mechanical correction factors. All right, so all you're doing is you're basically, you're taking this ampacity, you're taking this ampacity, you are multiplying the ampacity by some other factor here, right? The temperature rating of the uh, insulation and then by another uh, a factor. So let's say 0 0.9 and a 0 0.82 because of some mechanical factors. So that's what you're doing. You're taking the ampacity in amps, you're multiplying it by something because the insulation can only handle a certain amount. You're multiplying it by something else because you're installing in a certain way. That's all we're doing. So um, where we get these uh, factors is what gets confusing. Well, we get these insulation temperature factors by from table 5A. And you'll get used to this once you use them all. You get the mechanical uh, correction factors. And this is all in the tables section of the code. And you get these mechanical correction factors by some other tables in the code. So uh, they are um, tables 5B, 5C, and 5D. And those are for, you know, if you have two to four insulated conductors that are spaced less than 25% of the largest cable diameter, uh, or they are for if there are, you know, four to six insulated conductors in one raceway, then you should reduce that ampacity. Uh, you, if there are, let's say, 25 conductors in one raceway, then you have to reduce it a lot. Table 5C says you, you have to multiply by 0.6. Um, and then, you know, 5D is when they're ventilated and spacing is maintained a certain way in ventilated and ladder type cable trays. So these are specific installations, so I'm going to call them mechanical. So that's where you find them. So you have, again... What you need in amps, and then you have your um, 5A corrections, and then you multiply by your, you know, let's say 5C or 5B or whatever, and you get new reduced amps. All right. So that's what you that's what you first do. So that's your new amps. Uh, and I will type that here. This gives reduced amps. 
Now, take your reduced stamps. And go to tables one, two, or three to find the size of cable. That's it. That's all you do. So you have your, your amps, and then you derate them because of insulation. You derate them because of mechanical corrections, or maybe you don't because there are some situations where you don't need table 5A, B, C, or D. So then in that case, you just take your allowable ampacity, two tables, one, two, or three, to find the size of cable. You find the ampacity along the top, and you, uh, sorry, you find your temperatures along the top, your allowable ampacities in the middle, and that'll give you on the left-hand side the size of cable that you use. But how do you know which tables to use? So that, that's all that we have left to learn in conductor in section four, conductor sizing, is how do you know which table you use once you have derated with these factors? Well, um, I'll give you a hint. Table one is for copper. Table two is for copper. Table three is for aluminum. Table one is for copper with a single conductor. Table two is for copper with um, three conductors. and Or sorry, um, not more than three conductors that are copper. And table three is for um, aluminum. And table four, sorry, table four is for aluminum more than one or two conductors. Okay, so let's make a little flowchart of which conductor to use. So I'm gonna start this little flowchart at the beginning here saying that this is a flowchart for, for rule four, four, which is am, ampacity sizing Alks, uh, wire size. Because section four is for figuring out your wire sizes properly according to code. Um, and I'm just gonna look at the case where we are ambient air, less than 30 degrees Celsius. And of course you're gonna use a correction factor if you are outside of that. So now what we first have to do is, whoops, we're going to first have to see, well, what type of material do we have? So I'm just trying to figure out which table to use. So what type of material do I have? And if that material is copper, I'll do one thing. If that material is aluminum, I will do another thing. Now, if that material is copper and it is a single conductor, I'll do one thing. If it's one, one, two, three conductors, I'll do another thing. If it's copper and it is four and more conductors, I'll do another thing. And if it is four or more conductors in free air, I will do another thing. And this, again, remember, we are just taking our ampacity, we're reducing it by an insulation correction factor, we're reducing it by mechanical correction factors, and then we are taking that to table one, two, three, or four. And now I'm showing you, oops, now I'm showing you which table to take it to. All right, so if it's copper, we're gonna take it to eventually one of these tables. And if it's aluminum, we're gonna take it to eventually one of these tables. So here's copper and aluminum is spread out the same way. So let's put aluminum way down here.
So it's either going to be copper or it's going to be aluminum. And it's going to be copper of of a single conductor, one, two, three, four plus, four or more. It's going to be aluminum single, one, two, three, four plus, or four or more. Okay, so we still don't know which tables to go to, but we're getting there. Now, this single conductor can be in raceway or conduit. This single conductor can be in free air. Uh, these one, two, or three conductors can be in raceway or conduit, or they can be in free air. And you can see where I'm going with this. Uh, four plus conductors, can be in, I'm going to give myself a bit more room here. Four plus conductors can be in raceway or conduit, or they can be underground. And uh, what else did I have? Four or more conductors in uh, that are by themselves in free air, they actually don't break down again. So let's put our little arrows on here then. We have single conductors in raceway, raceway and conduit or free air. We have one, two or three conductors in raceway or free air. We have four or more conductors in raceway or underground. And we have four or more conductors in free air. And now we're ready to say which tables each of these cases are. So remember, we're taking our ampacity that we had from our problem, and then we had derated that ampacity, and then we're bringing that ampacity to table one, two, three, or four. We're looking for it in the table with the temperature conditions, and it'll tell us what size. So let's do that. If it is a single conductor in raceway or conduit, we just simply go to table one. If it's in free air, it's table one, and it has been reduced by the factor in 5D already the raceway or um, uh, let's see, the raceway or conduit, if it's one, two or three conductors is table two. And if it was in free air, it's table two, plus it has been, the uh, ampacity has been reduced by table five, by the reduction factor in um, table, Oh, sorry. This actually has to go to table one and 5B. If it's four or more conductors that are copper, then it's table two. If it is four or more conductors that are copper and mounted underground, it needs to be calculated, the, the size needs to be calculated by IEEE 835 procedure, which is just in section four. And I'm sorry, I made an error here. This has to be table two plus correction factor in 5C. Oops. Plus correction factor in 5C. And that's where you find your ta tables. Oh, wait, one more. What if it's four or more conductors in free air? Four or more conductors 
in free air is table two. Again, these are from the table sections of the Canadian Electrical Code and 5C. So I'm just hoping to organize for you um, which cases, in which cases we go to which tables, because this section can get a little bit confusing that way. Uh, we can do a similar thing with, with um, the aluminum conductors. It is split the same way. So I'm gonna take these same categories and you'll see if you look in section, if you really read section four um, very well, then you will see that they are split up the same way. They're just sitting in different sections. So for aluminum, we have single conductors in raceway or conduit and free air. One, two, three conductors in raceway and conduit and free air. Four plus conductors are in Sorry, four plus conductors are in uh, raceway or conduit and underground. I got confused there because I didn't add more spacing in here. Do, do, do. Let's see and add some more spacing here. We'll bring this one up. Nope, we'll bring this one down. We'll bring this. Really want just one of those. There we go. Okay, so four plus conductors can be a raceway or conduit or underground. And then from there, we can find out all of our tables. Here we go. I mean, these are a lot of special cases. And in this case, these are different tables than what I've listed above for copper. For aluminum is table three. In free air is table three and a correction factor from 5D. One, two, or three conductors in raceway or conduit is table four. In free air is table three plus a correction factor from 5B. Um, Four plus conductors in raceway or conduit is table two, plus correction factor in 5C. And underground is IEEE method 835, which is pretty clear in the Canadian Electrical Code how to do that method. Four or more conductors sitting in free air is table four. Plus correction factors in table 5C. So not so difficult. Let me just review again what we were doing is we were finding in this section, we find our ampacity and then we correct. And then for temperature of our insulation and then we correct for mechanical things like how they're installed. These are decimal values, decimal values, so they're gonna reduce this, uh, this number of amps. Then you're gonna to go to table one, two, three, or four, according to this flow chart that I just made. You're going to round up in the allowable ampacity, which is in the bulk of the table. You're gonna to look to the left-hand side and find the gauge or the size that you should be using. And that is how you use section four in size and conductors. It's got lots of words, but really it is just exactly this routine. Most of it is just trying to figure out if you're gonna to get to table one, two, three, or four, and which of these correction factors do you use in table 5A, 5B, 5C, or 5D? That's it.